Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, and Kitizen. And today, first of all, it is 6.30 and I'm about to go to bed. So this is my no makeup, pajamas, hot mess. This is what you get when you come to my channel kind of look. The time change kicks my butt. We do not have little kids anymore. Our kids are six, eight, and 10 but I'm the one now being affected. I was up at 6 a.m. today because the sun was up and you know, for no other reason than, oh, let's start the day. So I'm tired, but I am happy to be getting this video out. Today's video, I'm going to go over my sales from October, but only my shoe sales, mostly because the video would be really long if I did everything else. And I've been telling you guys for months, I'm going to try to do weekly what sold videos. That has not happened yet. However, today is Monday, November the 8th, and I have already recorded my first week of November What Sold video. So that will be coming out in the next few days. So yes, I am proud of myself. So October, we're going to do shoes. Now I love selling shoes. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know, I, you're going to see that thread up came through for me in October. October was a fantastic month for me. There were its moments. I had a few days where I was like, hello. Uh, November hasn't started out that great, but I had 123 sales in the month of October that resulted in almost $3,400 in sales. And I had 58 shoe sales. So 58 out of 122, but my shoe sales accounted for more than half of my profits. So I just thought I would go over this with you guys. I know many of you have commented that you have learned a lot from me in terms of kids' shoes. That is my most favorite thing to source, to sell. I, my kids all have way too many pairs of shoes, but I love it. I love kids' shoes. And you're going to see that there is some money in them. So my hope is that maybe you'll learn a thing or two. And uh, I know this is watching videos like this is how I grow as a reseller. And yeah, so let's jump in. All right, we are gonna start with Kitizen. And guys, if you are not cross posting, maybe you don't sell kids items, but your women's clothing, shoes and accessories, push them over to Kitizen. I use lists perfectly. Best thing I ever did for my reselling business. It is not expensive. I have a code linked below to save 30% off your first month. I tell my friends, listen, if you don't have a ton of listings, I have close to a thousand. Maybe you only have a couple hundred. You could literally just do the free trial. Don't even use my code. I don't push lists perfectly just because I'm a, I don't know what I am. I have a code. Anyone can get a code. The moment you sign up for it, you have your own code, but, um, they have a three day free trial. Try it out. Maybe you have enough listings to get it, them all done in three days and just kind of see how it goes. But I'd love for you to use my code, save your money. And yeah, I'll never not have it. So anyway, push your women's and, and stuff over to kid. So first up these snow hiking ice trail boots, these came in a thread up kids shoe rescue box. For that box, I did get a pair credited to my account. So my cost of goods ended up being $2.62. These shoes had no brand. I did find them on Amazon. I think they were like $39 on Amazon. So anyway, they sold for, I'm going to tell you the total because like on this item, for example, I don't offer free shipping on any platforms. I had these listed at $25 plus the flat rate envelope shipping cost, but I sent them an offer of $26. So I'm just going to tell you what they sold for, including shipping as we go through these numbers. So they sold for 26 bucks. So that was a pretty great sale for an unbranded pair of shoes. They were actually cool. I don't live where there's ice. So they had this little thing that you could flip out and help you walk through ice. Kind of cool. All right. These sorrel purple snow boots, my friends know that I do this as a side hobby. So I've got friends who they don't want to sell stuff. They just want it out of their house. So a good friend of mine gave me these and they sold for 40 bucks. So shout out to my friend for handing those to me. All right. These Converse were my daughters. They're actually really neat. I'd never seen this before. They had those, I thought they were stained when I picked them up. I got them years ago at a once upon a child. It's actually like an Aztec print. So these sold for $15 and they were not in the best of shape, guys. I listed them in play condition. They had stains, they had wear. They were not the original laces. I had put those uh, elastic things in them, but Converse sells. 
All right, next up, Mini Melissa's. You guys know this is my most favorite brand and I'm slightly mourning the fact that my daughter is in the last size that has the Mary Jane strap. I have a video here on my channel all about how to clean them, how to authenticate them. There are a lot of fakes out there. So these, actually I picked up at Once Upon a Child for $4.80. They sold for $30. These strawberry ones are really hard to find and they will sell quickly. These Ugg baby booties I picked up for $6.50 at Once Upon a Child. They were in new condition. They sold for $28. These Converse were my son's. They sold for $27.55. And I feel like they were almost maybe vintage. I don't know. They were different than other ones I have, but they sold. All right, another pair of mini Melissa's. If you've watched me in, in the recent past, you know that I just sized up. So my daughter had a lot of them. So these were our personal shoes. They sold for $35.15, my full asking price. These Clarks came in a thread up shoe rescue box, $5.33. They sold for $30. Kenison has a lot of different shipping options. I do utilize the labels from within each platform. I don't go outside the platforms. It's just extra work for shipping or printing them. Um, but they have a $9.50 label and that's up to five pounds. So that's pretty great. They did not used to have that option is why I'm mentioning that. All right, these L.L. Bean duck boots came in a thread up shoe rescue box. You're going to hear me say that a lot. And if you're watching this video today, I'm going to get this up tonight, Monday, November the 8th. There is a sale on thread up rescue boxes today, only 15% off with the code rescue. And there's usually never sales and you can never use any of your coupon codes on rescue boxes. So that's why I, all right, these sold for $48. And um, these were a pair that I, talked about in the video. I had no idea how to read the size, but I did a chat. They had on the bottom, they said BM and I used the chat on the LLB website and they were able to teach me that the B stands for six. They start at size five. So that would be A. B is six. C, seven. I had another pair that had started with D. Those are size eight. And then the M is just like medium, normal. They're not like a wide or a narrow. So fun fact for you. All right. These area boots were brand new with a tag. I sourced these off of a, I recently did a video. The website was called mommy and me resale. It's a little small resale shop out of Washington state. And I had $15 and 99 cents into these and I sold them for $80. So I knew they would be a solid flip when I got them and a fast flip. All right. These Michael, Michael, Michael Coors, Ashland suede booties, also from a thread up box, $5.30. They sold for $58. And people are always like, I can't sell shoes without a size. Guys, these did not have a size. They are the type of shoes that come with a sticker on them. I found them listed on Poshmark and other places, brand new, and that's all they have. I hate that companies do that, but I'm an eight and a half. I tried them on and they were definitely an eight based on my foot. I showed measurements, no issues, got good feedback for it. All right, these Ugg Coolabera shoes, uh, that is their like diffusion line, like the lower end, but they will still sell for you. They sold for $32. All right, over to Mercari. Mini Melissa again, these are my daughter's, my most favorite style. You, there's water and glitter in them. I'm an aerial obsessed human, and so I love these. They sold for $24. Now on Mercari, when I say 24, they also paid the shipping. So they actually sold, what are they, they were in over 30 bucks for these shoes. So I'm just going to tell you what my price was. Another pair of mini Melissa's, also a personal item. So when, when I have had an item for over three years in my spreadsheet, I just put zero, mostly because I can't remember what I paid and we got personal use out of them. Uh, these sold for $30. These bogs, they sold for $30. My cost of goods I have is zero because if you remember, I talked, I talked to you guys like, you know, you watch all of my videos if you're a loyal subscriber, which it's okay if you don't. Maybe I'm just the only crazy person who has nothing better to do than to watch all of my friends on YouTube. I'm literally washing dishes, cooking dinner, and I have my phone watching my reselling friends on YouTube. When I'm listing, my computer is playing YouTube. So anyway, if you're one of those people like me, love you. So these, I had a $10 off coupon at Once Upon a Child and they were $10. And so I paid nothing, like zero. I didn't even have to pay tax. 
So that was a solid, after taxes and fees, that was a profit of $25.83. So love it. Made well, suede heels, thread up rescue box. I'm telling you, they, I mean, they're not always good, y'all. I'm not telling you to run out and get one, but they have done me right. Even the boxes that I think are like kind of crappy at first, when I look back at my numbers, these sold for $25. These Jeffrey Campbell black Tiffany heels, guess where they come from? A thread up rescue box for $5 and 33 cents. And honestly guys, all of my local Goodwills have started pricing women's shoes from like 10 to $16. There's like these Jeffrey Campbell heels, I would not have paid $5 for. So it's kind of, thread up is kind of moving up for me in terms of shoes these days. So these sold for $36, plus they paid the $12 shipping. These Joyfully Boots, a great brand to look out for. I did pay $6 for them. I could have sold them for a little more, but I didn't notice when I was in the store. Um, inside, you can't, underneath is sold. Maybe you can see right here. There's almost like watermarks inside. It wasn't sticky. There was, I mean, they were in brand new condition and then there was a little scuff, but the bottoms of them, you could tell they had not been worn uh, like at all, but they did have a couple little flaws on them, but they still sold for $24 within like two days of listing. So that is a great brand to look out for. I've talked recently about their gladiator sandals. They just make really cute stuff. All right. These Converse relist your items. You guys, this is one of the first items I ever listed. These were my son's Converse. They actually did not know until I relisted them and, and actually looked them up. They are called the I love New York because they look like the New York subway, which is so funny because I, this is the tongue. I never knew that the tongue said that because it was always tucked down in the shoe. Anyway, I've had these listed for probably two and a half years. They were just kind of way down there. I re-photographed them, re-listed them, and they sold the next day. Funny how that works. For $18, good to go. Goodbye. Get out of my house. All right, these mini Melissa's do amazing, but throw in Disney collaborations with mini Melissa, even better. These sold for $42. And these were not my daughters because they were too small. These, I actually did pay up at $11.39 from swap.com. If you haven't watched my videos about swap, go back and find them. I have a playlist. Um, so they sold for $42. I still made a net profit of $24.89, even though I paid up because I knew they would sell. These vans, same thing. I did pay up at a local thrift store, $5.99 for these, and they sold for $39. They have the, the, the hands do the Velcro thing. Super cute. You will notice I find a lot of Disney items. I am in Orlando for those who don't know. So it is a slight advantage for me and I'm kind of Disney obsessed. So it just calls to me. These Cat and Jack shoes, typically these came in a thread up kids shoe rescue box. I would typically take Cat and Jack to my local buy, sell trade because there's just not a lot of money in them. But I knew with Halloween coming up, and Christmas that these would sell and I would get more than once upon a child. And I did technically have $5 and 50 cents into them. Sure enough, they sold for 10 bucks and I still made a profit of $2 and 91 cents. So was it worth my time? I think so. Small sales do add up. And I do believe maybe I'm just speaking it to the universe. The more sales you make, the more sales you make. So if I know something's going to sell, I'm going to list it. These Robies, oh, these are my daughters. I love this brand. If you have babies that don't walk yet, look into them. They're leather, they're little, they have little moccasins, so cute. Uh, they did not have the new, see, my youngest is six, so I'm probably old, but they've got way more brands now with moccasins, but Robies, I feel like were like the original. These were the kind that had the hard sole. And again, these, they size their shoes. I think these said 24 months or something, but I, listed them yeah 20 to 24 months which is super my daughter wore these when she was four but i put them next to another brand size eight and measured them and listed them as an eight and they sold all right poshmark coming in hot poshmark is absolutely my top performing platform now and i can only attribute that to list perfectly and i my only regret is not using it sooner all right these clarks were a personal item i sold for a family member and they sold for $20. Of course, you guys know I'm posh. They are also paying the $7.45 fee, uh, shipping fee, unless I gave them a shipping discount, but I don't keep track of that. On, I mean, I do, I keep, I have my gross, my net and my profit, but that would make this video way too long. But I would say that 
probably 70% of my sales on Poshmark come from sending an offer or accepting an offer to, to me. These guest shoes came from a thread up rescue box, $5.33 into them. They sold for $34. I wouldn't typically list guests, but these were real leather. They're really cute too. These, uh, Derek Lamb is a Bolo brand. These, you guys were in such terrible shape, but these shoes are expensive, like several hundred dollars. You can see, I mean, I listed them in play condition. Please review all photos. They were well loved. They are missing, like there's a lot of bald spots from the calf hair. But I just thought maybe somebody could like repurpose these. I don't know. They were loved, okay? Like, right, I, but they still sold for $16 and I still profited six bucks. So, you know, when it comes to designer items, I'm more apt to list them if they're not in the best condition just because they will still sell. These vans, I did pay up at $10.48 for them, but they sold for $29. I thought they were cool. That's the only reason I paid up for them. They were Simpsons and typically character vans are going to sell for more money than regular vans. Those were kid size, little kid size one, if I didn't say that. This was a fantastic sale. These Tory Burch booties I got in a thread up rescue box like before summer, a long time ago. One of my first thread up shoe boxes. They sold for $100.00. With a little shipping discount, I made $78.50. So after my cost of goods, I made $72.50. And those thread up shoe rescue boxes are only $80 and they come with 15 pairs. So this one pair basically paid for that whole box. I did have to hold on to them until fall set in, but that was a great flip. Another pair of mini Melissa's. These are my daughter's. They were not in the best condition. They're black, so they hit a lot of the flaws. I did disclose them. They just were really scratched up, but they still sold for $19. This is a good sale. These are shoots. They, I did pay up at my local Goodwill $35. My Goodwill had them marked at $70, but I picked them up on a half off that color day. So they were in brand new condition and they sold for $88. So I made $68. And this is one of those situations where the buyer asked me a million questions, like so many questions. And I know some resellers just don't answer them or you get really annoyed. And I just tried really hard not to. And she ended up being a very happy buyer. So sometimes just take a deep breath, have you a glass of wine and answer their questions. These shoes I thought would never sell and they were taking up a lot of space. They came from a thread up rescue box. I had $6 into these. Sometimes it just depends on the taxes and they increase the prices. I think they increased the boxes to $90 for a little while and then back down to 80. I don't know, but these sold for $23. Thank goodness. This was a good flip. I love it when I source items from my couch. I love online shopping and this is a way for me to online shop, but I'm getting paid to do so. I picked these Kamek, Kamek, yes, Kamek William boots from swap.com for $19.19, $19.19, they sold for $108. So that left me with a profit of $67.21. And I buy stuff for my own kids off swap. So to me, that was $67 that paid for a bunch of t-shirts that I got from my kids for school. So I love swap. These Converse, I picked up at Goodwill for $2. They are Batman. Same with the Vans. If you can find the characters, they're probably going to sell faster and for more money. Those were a little toddler size seven. These vans came in a thread up kids shoe rescue box for $5.40. They sold for 29. I think these sold for more because this is a sought after pattern. They come, you know, this is obviously the little girls one because it's all multicolors with pinks and purples. And then they have the typical black and white ones for kids and adults. These I only listed because they were all leather. They were not in the best shape, but they sold quickly. $5.75 into them from a thread up rescue box. I'm pretty sure that thread up funded almost my entire month of October's inventory and they sold for 14 bucks. So I still walked away with $4. And to me, that was still going to be more than my once upon a child would have given me. And shoes are the easiest thing to list. So I definitely don't really list play condition clothing, like holes and stains and all that, unless it's like super high end, but shoes I will, cause they're just easy. All right, these Allegria, Allegria, I still, I have Google to try to see how to actually say that, no help. I picked these up, I paid up at $13 for these. I thought they were cool, they were kind of holographic. 
and they sold for $45. They did take a little while to sell. They were a size 38, so, and they were in great shape. So I'm not sure why, but these retail for $130. Great. More vans. So we moved into this house last June, so almost a year and a half ago. My husband found a box of shoes that he had never unpacked. And so he's more minimalist than I am. And he's like, you know what? I haven't worn any of these in a year. Let's go through them. We took several of them to Play-Doh's. I listed some of them and call it a day. And I did buy him a new pair of um, boots off of Swap and he was happy. So he traded in a whole box for one pair. These sold for 20 bucks. So they've been sitting in a box for a year and now I got myself $16. These, ugh, okay. I love people. I tell myself this a lot. So these Chacos, if you remember, these came in one of my, my a Thread Up Kids shoe rescue box, okay? And they, um, this is a pair that Thread Up refunded me for. So I had nothing into them, but I still, they were a perfectly good pair of shoes. I didn't want them to go to a landfill. I'm like, you know what? Let me list them. They were two different sizes, okay? You see my title says, read down here, read. The left shoe is a 13, the right shoe is a one. They are different sizes. Y'all, I put this in capital letters, priced accordingly. They were, I had them listed at like $15 and I, no returns because you didn't read the size. They are one size different. I listed it. I mean, I, I did everything I could. Okay. So they actually got a lot of attention and I have a daughter who's about this size and I had her put them on. And to be honest, you really couldn't tell the difference of them on her feet. So I'm like, you know what? Someone out there who lives somewhere where they go hiking or whatever, they're going to want a pair of throw down shoes, whatever. Chacos are quite expensive. Even for kids, they're like, what, 70, 80 bucks. Anyway, it happens to be, I get out, I have a routine in the morning around eight o'clock. The kids go off to school. I package all my sales for the day and I put them out and my mail, but my mailman picks them up from me, scans them around 11 o'clock. Anyway, offer came in. I accepted an offer. You guys that are watching this know this. If you accept an offer, or someone sends, you send an offer to someone and they accept it, or if they send you an offer and you accept it, there is no three hour wait. Typically, if somebody buys something full price on Poshmark, you have to wait three hours before you can click the little buttons and say you shipped it. I was in the middle of shipping. Somebody, I had sent her an offer, I think. Yeah, I had sent her an offer of $12 with discounted shipping. My profit was $7.55. She accepted my offer. I'm like, sweet, I'm packaging up my stuff. So I clicked shipped got it all packed up. Mailman, literally as I'm finishing packaging up, like you can't make this stuff up, you guys. Comes down, takes my packages. He scans them in front of me because he knows I'm crazy, love him, and took them away. 32 minutes later, like I screenshot, I had everything timestamp. I get a message from this woman. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please cancel my order. My child had my phone and made accidental purchase. And I'm like, I am so sorry. These are already marked as shipped. I literally, my mailman took these from my house 10 minutes ago. I, I can't cancel your order. Well, then she became super angry and was like, you edited the listing after I purchased to make it say they had two sizes. Like she like went off the deep end and I'm like, whoa. So, okay, now your kid didn't. Now you have buyer's remorse. And I was like, listen, this is a $7 sale. I am not trying to scam you. Had I not shipped this out, I would have gladly refunded you you know, and she, she was like, if you don't refund this right now, I'm going to give you one star, like being a bully, like almost borderline harassing. I blocked her. I sent all the screenshots to Poshmark. I'm like, listen, this chick is like off her rocker. I mean, I was, I didn't say that I wanted to. And I'm like, you can clearly see it. Thankfully my mailman, since he scanned it, it happened to be one of those days where all of everything updated quickly. It literally already said received by post office. You know what I mean? Like, so it was clear that the package was out of my hands. And they said, we will reach out to her. We have a zero tolerance for bullying, whatever, whatever. She ends up getting her shoes and sure enough, gives me, she gives me a one-star review, which is the one thing I don't like about Poshmark. I feel like in that case, because I had all of this proof, like she shouldn't have been able to give me a review. You know, like I've got tons of five-star reviews and like three bad reviews from like salty people over who knows what, but I don't know. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And she didn't even... The reason for her bad review wasn't even description. It was other. She didn't even write any words. She gave me one star and said other. Like, anyway, story time. And I told you guys this. I'm just sitting here talking to my camera because nobody else in my world, not even my husband, would really care to hear that story. He'd be like, oh, well, did you still make your money? Cool, move on. You might be thinking that also. I'd be like, Amanda, please just keep going. <laughs> so anyway, that was my story about my chacos. And people are crazy. Like, 
don't lie, you know, don't blame your kid. I hate people blame their kids. That does that happen to you? That's is not the first time someone, my kid accidentally bought this. No, they didn't. Like, especially when your story changes five minutes later. Moving on. These were my husband's again, sold for $15 and they were in really play condition. I said, note, play condition, watch where fading. Like I try to be, this is the thing. I try to be over the top. I take so many photos. Can't please everyone. I know I, I try. All right. These are some great Crocs. Totally off topic. If you're looking for a pair of tennis shoes, I don't like to wear tennis shoes. I'm a Florida girl. I live in flip-flops, but every now and then you got to wear some sneakers. These are great. They're lightweight. They're comfortable. I have, I bought them in two sizes. I picked these up for me at a Goodwill for $8. I needed the bigger size. Anyway, my son is very, very sensitive with his feet. He has some, some issues with textures and stuff. Anyway, these are a pair of shoes he can wear. He has a few different colors. They're called the Crocs Light Ride Pacer sneakers. They're wonderful. I just got my six-year-old a pair of them as well, and she loves them. So anyway, story time, Amanda. Good Lord, keep going. We'll be here all night. They sold for 28 bucks. I paid eight for them. <laughs> These were my favorite. These are Doc Martens little pink Delaney boots. These came in a thread up kid's shoe box, $5.15 into them. They were a little baby toddler, size seven. Just the cutest. They sold for $39 in less than a day. So if you like look in the kid's shoes, y'all, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Even if you're like, I don't sell kid's shoes. If you're a reseller, you know docs, you know what they look like. They're just tiny. So keep your eye out. They sell these fry ankle booties. They call them shooties. These came also in a thread up box for $6. They sold for 100 bucks. So I made a profit of $74. Thank you, thread up. Sometimes they come through. All right, these clogs I picked up for $6. They sold for 59. The brand is clogs with a K. I thought they looked nice. They're similar to a Dansko. They took a long time to sell. So I would not recommend picking them up. They retail for a lot. It just took forever for them to sell and they take up a lot of room. Same with these Crocs. I should not have picked these up. You guys know I talked about, I do pick up smaller size women's shoes if they're appropriate for kids, like women's size five and six will fit preteens. These were a heel, similar also to a dance go, they, but they were tiny and they took forever to sell. I had $6 into them. They sold finally for $24 and I made 11 bucks. So goodbye to those. Native, this is a brand of shoes you see me talk about a lot. I'd never seen this style before. I had $5 into these from my local Once Upon a Child, which is a buy sell trade store. And they sold quickly as well for $19. So these were just a cool little boot. I don't know if they're meant to be snow boots. I couldn't find the style anymore on their website, but guys, Google lens. That's how I learned that they were called the Fitzsimmons black boots. These Pumas also came out of my husband's. I've not seen these shoes in a year box. And I'm pretty sure he had these in high school. They are old and they sold for $31. These Keens saved the day. I purchased one time a Goodwill blue box shoes. It was five pairs of shoes for $35. The other four I took to buy, sell, trade, gave one pair to my dad. And these were the only pair that were able to be listed and they sold for $72. So I technically had $7.45 into them, but technically, technically I had $35 because I didn't list anything else. So I still walked away with a profit of $57.60. Take that away. I still was able to profit like 25 bucks on that box just by selling these shoes. So I love Keens and these were a, a, a kid size five. So a women's size five, same difference, girls, kids. So those sold. Native again. These were my daughter's shoes. They were a personal item. And so I had nothing into them. They sold for $17. And guys, people are paying the shipping. It's crazy for these tiny little shoes that weigh nothing. Get your kid's stuff listed on Posh. Even if you don't sell kid stuff, some of y'all have kids. What do you do with their clothes? Get it listed. All right, like right now, it just got cold in Florida. Okay, it's like in the 50s. That's freezing for us. My kids don't have any long sleeve t-shirts. So I have been online looking for long sleeve t-shirts because I just don't feel like going to Target. So people shop online. All right, these are called the Sperry Lounge Wharf. They were kind of weird. They were really like not much to them. Some people don't like listing Sperry's. They still sell. I had 515 into them. They sold for 20 bucks. So not huge profit, but they sold fast. 
Okay. These are a pair of Crocs. They're called the above deck boat shoes. You can see one of them is really wrinkly. I didn't notice that in the store. This was the day I picked up two pairs of these in two different sizes. It's kind of weird, the exact same color, everything, but you see how, yeah, one was just all wrinkly. So anyway, they still sold, I had $9 into them. They still sold for 35 bucks. So I still made $20 profit. Crocs will always sell. Couple more to go. Thank you for hanging. If you've made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up. Apparently it really helps out my channel. These were another uh, bad buy on my part. I had $6.95 into them. They're a pair of Stuart Weitzman black pumps. I only bought them because they were size 11, which is great, but you see how skinny they are? I didn't realize until later that they're actually an SS, which is like an, a narrow, very narrow. So a very long, very narrow foot, which is a very particular buyer. But she finally came along and paid $27 for them. So was happy to see those go. These say shells. These are, this brand, I don't think they're always sold at Anthropology. In fact, I know they're not. This particular pair was. And they were also a women's size 11. These came in a thread up box for $6.67. They sold for $39. And weirdly enough, this pair came in the same thread up shoe rescue box from months ago. Like in the springtime, I got a box filled with booties. It was probably the same one as those Tory Barches. But anyway, these Mark Fisher suede booties sold for $41, also $6.67 into them. And finally, these Gianni Vinny boots. These were my personal shoes I bought for a three-day conference. They were so uncomfortable, but I wore them <laughs> to this conference. I got them at Dillard's, probably paid like 50 bucks for them. They sold for 35 and I was happy to get them out of my closet. All right, so those are my October shoe sales. So we are gearing up we me um i am working on a death pile challenge with me myself and i and i'm excited to share that with you guys and i am listing all the shoes i have been sourcing i am on a no buy november <coughs> excuse me but prior to that i went sourcing for a whole week because i needed more inventory but i bought a lot of shoes because shoes are what are selling right now so get your shoes lifted lifted i'm going to bed y'all get your shoes listed I hope you guys are surviving this time change and man, yeah, now it is seven o'clock, which means this video has gone on for way too long. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.